Welcome to the Pianist TV channel. In this following masterclass, Graham Fitch discusses staccato and legato. The filming takes place at Steinway Hall, right in the heart of London. Before Graham begins his lesson, here's a quick glance around Steinway's impressive front showroom and Hall of Fame. Graham demonstrates on a Model D Concert Grand. Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and I'm at Steinway Hall in London bringing you this demonstration on legato and staccato touch that complements my article in Pianist magazine issue number 68. I'm going to be talking about three different types of legato touch but let me begin by demonstrating four different types of staccato touch. Now, staccato comes from the word staccare, which is the Italian word meaning to separate. It doesn't mean to play short, it just means to separate. So if I demonstrate now using a five-finger position, I could play very short with a lot of separation, or I could play with barely any separation. They're both technically staccato. I'd like to begin by talking about a finger staccato, which is sometimes called a staccatissimo. Now, let me demonstrate using the beginning of Mendelssohn's E minor scherzo. And I'm going to play it, first of all, slowly to you so that you can see what I'm doing at the keyboard. Now, my arm remains passive and still, and my fingertip remains very active. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the fingertip toward the palm of my hand. This produces a very sharp, very short staccato. Now let me show you that. That's a finger staccato. Now let me move on to a wrist staccato. Now in a wrist staccato, we want to keep the wrist bouncy and we need to keep the fingers somewhat firm, otherwise I'm going to flop around over the keyboard and produce an unfocused sound. Now we can use a wrist staccato in light passages, sometimes light chords, or in this example from De Lieb, the Paspiede which we have in the magazine, this is a left hand um, bouncy. Let me just show you this. Moving onwards, I'm now going to demonstrate a forearm staccato, which comes from this part of the arm. Now, if I'm doing this staccato, I need to make sure that my wrist and my fingers are firm. In piano playing, we need sometimes to have a very loose wrist, and other times the wrist needs to be firm and connected to the arm. This is such an example. I'm going to be using, as my example, the beginning of Schumann's novelette in D minor, again, which you'll find in the magazine. And here is an example of forearm staccato. And lastly, I'm going to use as my example for staccato that comes from the back and the shoulders, I'm going to be using an extract from Chopin's third scherzo, the double octave. Passage. Let me play you the passage first. I'm going to do it somewhat slower so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be using my whole arm, but because I'm using my back and my shoulders, tiny, tiny movements, you might not necessarily see that much, but let me describe afterwards what it is I'm doing. I have the feeling there that I'm springy in the forearm and I'm jumping or rebounding from one octave to the next, a little bit like a jackhammer or a pneumatic drill. The feeling is very comfortable, and because I'm using the big muscles of my upper arm and my shoulder, it's relatively effortless. 
produces a big sound. Before I move on to legato touch, I'd just like to make a little comment about blending these various different types of staccatos. It's actually difficult to put them into pigeonholes and say, this is wrist staccato, this is finger, this is forearm, this is whole arm. In the final analysis, we'll be blending them. And the blend can vary from bar to bar, depending on the passage, depending on the type of sound that I want. And I'm reminded always of the quotation by famous piano teacher Leonid Nikolaev, who used to say, nothing in the arm without the finger, and nothing in the finger without the arm. So in fact, we're really using everything blended. I'm going to now move on to legato. Now legato simply means to join together or to connect. So if I go back to my five finger position that I used before, this is a legato. Now this finger releases as I play the next finger. It's a little bit like walking. As I lift this finger, the next one plays, and I get a connection. Now that's a standard vanilla legato of the sort that every beginner is taught and that we're using pretty much as our default um, touch in most piano playing. Let me show you a legatissimo touch, which is extremely useful for playing big cantabile melodies, not necessarily big actually, but cantabile melodies, in other words, melodies that sing. What I do for a legatissimo, let me demonstrate it again using my five finger position. What I do is I don't lift this finger until after this one has sounded. Now what that does is it binds or it joins those two sounds together in such a beautifully uh, overheld way that the beginning of the new sound, the attack of the new sound, is masked by the remnants of the previous sound. And what we get is a moment where actually where both sounds sound together, but it doesn't strike the ear as dissonant because it doesn't last that long. Let me just show you again. Before the ear has had a chance to recognize that dissonance, I've released the previous finger. It just means that I get a lovely blended overlap. If I demonstrate that using a tiny little snippet from Chopin's D-flat Nocturne, you'll see in the right hand I'm going to be releasing my fingers late. that's a legatissimo touch. I'm going to end by showing you a finger pedaling or overhold touch which we use a lot in the Baroque period and we also use it in the classical period. Actually we're using it in all piano playing to some extent or other. It's not marked in by the composer, it's up to us to surmise where we use it and where we don't. Before I show you how to do it I'm just going to give you an example from Mozart's Kirchel 333 sonata in B flat, just the beginning of the first movement. Now I'm going to do it first of all with no finger pedaling, and this is not an example I'd like you to copy. Uh, it's going to be too dry. Now even though I'm playing my left hand softly, it's still spiky. The sound that I'm achieving is still spiky. So I may think, well, let me now use a little bit of pedal then. And we get an even worse effect. I'm going to demonstrate it. I can't go on because that's obviously too much. The resonance is too much. And I'm covering over all sorts of uh, scale passages in the right hand. So the solution is to overhold the notes of the chords in the left hand. Let me show you just the left hand by itself. If you can see there, what I'm doing is I'm not lifting each finger in a normal legato way, but I'm leaving the fingers lying around at the bottom of the keys until such time as I need to use them again. And the effect is as though I had a little pedal just for that area of the keyboard. Let me show you now together. So 
I'm able, by using overholding or finger pedaling, to produce a carpet of harmonic sound that enables my right hand to sing and dance above it. Now that doesn't stop me using the pedal. I can use little touches of pedal as well as my finger pedal. I think that wraps up my demonstration on legato and staccato touches. Please join me again soon where I shall be describing non-legato touches.